All right, another letter here. Um, this one's an anonymous letter, so I can't give you your name out, um, but it's a uh, black girl, um, 30 years old, uh, black girl from Nashville, Tennessee. So um, I'm going to read your letter here. There's a bunch of different questions here. Number one, concerning health and things organic, what kind of lotion do you recommend? I'm a black girl, by the way, and also, do you think baby oil is good for your skin? Well, Johnson's baby oil probably is what you're referring to. It's mostly going to be based on petrochemicals. Petrochemicals, if you'll hear me talk about that a lot in my different videos, a petrochemical is a petroleum-based chemical. Okay, they get crude oil out of the ground, and then they refine it, and they can turn it into all sorts of magical potions. <laughs> Fuel to burn, you know, put you in your car to go down the road, oil to keep the pistons lubricated inside the vehicle and the valves and everything else, you know. Um, and then you can refine it a little bit differently and you can turn it into plastic things uh, to put your food in or your water in, or you can turn it into makeup or you can turn it into uh, whatever else, or just a little bit of an oily thing that you can put on your skin. It's petroleum. It's a petrochemical. No, uh, baby oil is a bad idea. Uh, things that would be good for your skin, um, to help kind of lubricate your skin. Again, understand that there's an underlying causal factor if you have dry skin. It's not lack of oil, okay? Dry skin is going to come from um, not having omega uh, fats in your, in your diet, other types of fats in your diet. Um, Low-fat diet is bad for you, okay? Animal fats are very, very good. Um, butter and, and things like that, okay? Uh, don't fall for the thing of the high cholesterol deal. Again, oxidized cholesterol is what you're trying to avoid and whatever. Look into it. I mean, you can do the study on your, on your own. But um, uh, if you want to bring that over real quick. And uh, another good source of vitamin A, which is very good to keep your skin moist. Liver. And is, uh, beef liver and stuff like that is, uh, um, you know, Braunschweiger is what you would call it, or liverwurst in a store, liver type of things, really, really high in vitamins. Again, oh, liver is a toxic thing or whatever. No, liver actually is what is kind of your vitamin factory or an animal's vitamin factory that makes the vitamins. So you want to get a lot of vitamins, you get liver. A lot of people don't like the taste of it, but liver is actually quite healthy. But this is an example of a good lotion for your skin. Okay, we made this stuff because here in northern Maine, it gets real cold in the winter. Your hands start to dry out and crack. Um, you'll get these little cracks in the corners of your thumb or whatever else, and they hurt like crazy. Um, this stuff cures it every single time. What is it? Well, it's coconut oil, which is really good. If you just want to have, could you hand me the coconut oil over there? Um, if you just want to have uh, like a just a, a nice oil kind of for your skin or whatever, thank you. Um, this is uh, just a regular brand here, coconut oil, unrefined. Um, just a nature's promise organic coconut oil um, what it looks like there get out a picture there um, this would be a good thing just as a something that you could put on your skin It'll never hurt you you can eat it we use it for toothpaste oh, this is actually our toothpaste container we just buy a jar of it toothpaste brush your teeth with it you can swallow it uh, my son doesn't even know how to spit out you know his toothpaste because we don't ever get fluoride toothpaste so um, he just, you know, swallows whatever he brushes and just swallows it and drink water and there you go. Um, so, and he never, never, has never had a cavity, by the way. He's going to be six years old here in two months, I think. Um, never had a cavity. So, and that's all we've ever brushed his teeth with, coconut oil. Maybe put a little bit of peppermint oil, food grade peppermint oil, but Herbs coconut oil. Yeah, we did a, a tooth powder for a little bit, you're right. An herbal tooth powder but that's another story but coconut oil in this stuff here see it's kind of a, a light green color coconut oil um, and then the green comes from yarrow powder yarrow is a wild herb pretty much grows everywhere all over the United States down probably into Florida I would imagine I think um, probably there in Tennessee it has kind of a rosemary type of a smell to it I could walk out and get some but don't have the time to right now, but we take it, dry it, grind it into powder, mix it in with this skin cream. There's also some beeswax in here to give it some firmness. Uh, I can't think if there's anything else in this, 
but it doesn't it's not hard to make you know skin cream this stuff will will help majorly with dry skin if you have cuts or cracks this will heal it baby lotion is not going to heal your cuts and cracks um, again um, the one time I was I was building one of the roofs of one of our buildings here and I, I had this two of the rafters came up the wooden rafters and it was just a little bit long and I just thought I'd do what's called kerfing where you take a saw and you cut a little bit and it helps it to tight fit tighter and I didn't have any of my regular carpentry type saws so I took a pruning saw which is razor sharp it's called a silky saw anybody out there knows what that is really sharp saws and I was cutting up on the roof and I wasn't I didn't have real good bracing and the saw skipped out of the cut and just went right into my thumb cut down into my thumbnail it was a pretty nasty cut and just blood just sprayed all over the place and my wife grabbed some yarrow just some a leaf of yarrow reaches down plucks it fold it up put it on the end of my thumb put a paper towel over top and duct tape around it and I'm thinking yeah okay yeah right you know this isn't gonna work I mean I got a really serious cut here but I just finished the job got it done and I mean it was hurting like crazy burned a little bit when I put the arrow on but whatever went back got the job done and she said how's your thumb feeling and I thought I said huh what do you mean and she said your thumb the one you cut there's no pain at all and in about three days it was almost completely healed I had to wait for the thumbnail to grow out you know so it didn't have the cut in it anymore but Yarrow is an amazing um, healing herb, very amazing. So you can make skin lotion. Uh, question number two, how to not let people steal your joy? Um, by remembering, setting your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Okay, remember what you have for eternity. I don't care how bad a day is going. Remember when you're born again that you are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You are born again, uh, adopted into the family of God. You have a special relationship with which no other people have. Um, and the, the joys that are going to be there in heaven, even coming back here to the earth to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years, unreal. It's just going to be amazing. And you're there and you're immortal. You're not going to be getting sick like you do now and whatever else. It's going to be a really neat time. So you think about things that are eternal. And, um, and another thing is understand the biblical admonition in the book of Titus, a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. So think of baseball, so to speak, you know, three strikes and you're out. You talk to somebody and they're, they're mad at you and whatever else they're trying to steal your joy. Um, answer them and they come back at you again, answer them again. And okay, third time, goodbye. I don't have time. You're not going to steal my joy. See ya. And you're going to have times of tribulation, times of, of being hurt and sorrow and whatever else. Sure, that's there. But uh, don't stay in the fight for too long. Number three, what do you think about comic books? Well, um, you know, Jack Chick wrote comic books, and I would say that they're pretty good. Um, they have graven images in them, so I do have an issue with that. Uh, the little chick tracks there's a lot of graven images a lot of trinitarian philosophy there's uh, problems with some of the gospel stuff that they bring out uh, the thing of finding a local church you know um, so that would be the you know christian type of gospel tracks um, comic books secular comic books a lot of times are very filthy i remember there was one i saw the one time it was actually called lucifer <laughs> And it was about, you know, Satan and whatever, this blonde-haired guy that had black wings and whatever. Um, <clears throat> I would stay away from gospel, or from uh, comic books, pretty much. Um, really wouldn't waste much time on that. Number four, if hand sanitizer is poisonous for your skin, what can you use instead? Um, well, again, if you have a good immune system, you're not really going to have to worry about sanitizing your hands. Understand that bacteria is actually a good thing. Um, there are good, there's good bacteria, there's bad bacteria. If you use antibacterial soap, you're going to kill both. Okay, good and bad bacteria. Um, it's about your immune system. Okay, um, I certainly would not put petrochemicals on my hands that are poisonous. Let me just rub this poison on here and kill anything good that's there to protect me. Uh, if you have a good immune system, I, I mean, I literally believe right now with the Lord's grace and help, 
Um, I was in real poor health in the past, very much a junk food eater. Uh, so I can speak from experience, um, and I'm not speaking in pride when I say this. Uh, my health is in, I'm in better sh shape right now. I'm going to be 45 years old in three days. Uh, and I'm in better health now than I was in my 20s. And I think, honestly, if somebody came up with a bottle of coronavirus or something, I realize that's probably not accurate, but if they took a coronavirus and just sprayed it in my face, I don't think it would affect me one bit. And if I did feel a little bit of a, oh, I'm starting to get a little soreness in the throat, a little tightness in the chest, Camu, Camu, um, powder, uh, superfood powders, some, you know, chaga tea, uh, garlic. Uh, again, this is antibacterial. So every time you brush your teeth, you're getting antibacterial, um, you know, oil there in your, in your mouth and everything else. I don't really worry about getting sick anymore. Uh, and if I do, it's okay, time to experiment. Let's see if this works. Let's see if that works. Get the books out. What herbs cure this? What, you know, nutrition cures that or whatever else. And you just start to experiment. You say, I'm going to eat this. And I'm going to eat that. And I'm going to cut out this and whatever else. Junk food will slow down your healing time. Healthy food will speed it up. Simple way to remember that or think about that. Um, do you, see, do you see anything wrong with being a loner or lone wolf? Uh, well, being a loner there, because you could say lone wolf, you know, wolf in sheep's clothing. But I understand what you're saying. Um, no, I don't. I really don't. Um, if you get to the point where you don't want to fellowship with other Christians, well, eh, that's kind of a problem, I guess. But, uh, you know, you should always remember that, yes, fellowship with other Christians, but always be willing to pull out of that group if you see that they're heretical. Um, it's always between you and the Lord. Always remember that. Um, but being a loner is very much part of nonconformity. Uh, again, you know, don't be afraid to be in the same room with the Lord Jesus Christ, just you and Him. Don't be afraid to talk to Him. Okay. Um, number seven, throughout your career dealing with wood, have you ever used a chipper? Um, I'm assuming you mean a chipper shredder. Uh, like you put wood in and you go, you know, it brings out chips. I'm assuming that's what you mean. And if so, yes, I actually have a chipper that we do use here at the property. Number eight, I'm a young lady who just turned 30 in April. What do you think I should invest in? Um, invest in things that will make you into a good uh, keeper at home. Um, learn how to sew. Learn how to do whatever your kindred thing is, uh, whatever... African type women, you know, would do in their crafts and handcrafts and whatever else. Study your, your culture, your ancestry. And I mean, I've seen some of these women like the Maasai tribes over there in Africa, and they come out with these dresses, the, the traditional dress, they do weaving and things. It's beautiful. It's absolutely just beautiful. Um, again, I, you know, I get called a racist sometimes and I'm just mystified by that because I'm not a racist. I love a lot of the African culture stuff over there. I think it's, I think it's just beautiful. I'm not an African, so I'm not going to be that way. But, you know, I, I appreciate it. Somebody from Africa would ever send me a handmade, you know, uh, blanket or something, I would treasure it. I would say, wow, this is great. Those are the things that you invest in. Okay. Understand, again, you look at the, the book of Genesis and you look at Abraham, he had great possessions, all right, um, not money in the bank, not stock markets that can go up and down and you lose everything one day and whatever. No, that's a bad idea. Invest in things that have eternal value, okay, as well. And um, getting the gospel out, giving the Bible out to people and whatever else. Those are good investments. Um, but stay out of debt. That's a big important thing. Um, Question number nine, I live at home with my parents. What advice do you have for a young lady who just turned 30 on how to move out on your own? And do you recommend a house apartment or maybe a tiny home? Well, if you, if you believe that you're just going to be single for the rest of your life, well, um, I would say if you can stay there at home and be there with your parents and, and make sure that they're well taken care of and be there for them into their old age, I think that that's a more honorable thing. If they're lost, and you feel like you have to get out, okay, I understand that, um, but then you're running into the thing of having to work outside the home and there's other issues there. I would pray for a husband, honestly, at that point, if you can't be at home with your parents. Um, if you can find a, 
<clears throat> uh, godly couple in your area or whatever else to, to help out somehow with them or whatever else, well, then do that. Um, you know, so that's how I would answer that. As far as a uh, living, what's the best type of living thing? Do you recommend a house, apartment, or maybe a tiny home? Tiny homes are, are great. Uh, we're kind of in our tiny home right now. And um, it's, it's, it's neat because it forces you into a couple different things that you can kind of forsake if you have a big house. Uh, it forces you to be tidy. Because if you get messy in a place this size, this is only about... Uh, I can almost touch the two walls there. I'm touching that wall and there I'm touching that wall there. Uh, not very wide. And if you let a lot of clutter get in here, it drives you crazy. So you're always constantly cleaning up and it doesn't take long to clean up, which is quite nice. Um, so there's different places with restrictions on tiny homes and whatever. I get that. But if you can, you know, if you really want your own place, maybe you could get a tiny home uh, on and park it there at your parents' place or whatever else so you have your own space. That would be something that might be a good idea. Maybe even build your own tiny home. They're not that difficult to build. Number 10, question number 10. Instead of watching TV all day, how can a person stay productive? Well, that goes back up to the what do you invest your time in, invest your money in. Um, learn hand skills, learn crafts, learn to make things with your hands. Um, especially important as the economy goes down the toilet here in America. Um, learning to do things with your hands is a great uh, skill. You stay productive. Um, you get into something where you're sewing or you're, you're doing some kind of knitting or whatever, again, your culture would be. Um, like there's a lot of Northern Europeans that do knoll binding, it's called. It's an older form of knitting. Be came before the thing of knitting needles, say it that way. Um, that stuff fascinates me. I mean, I, this... I don't know if I've ever said this in videos, but I actually like to sew things. And, it, you know, not any kind of really fascinating type of stuff or whatever, but I like to repair things with a needle and thread. And I'll just get, I get zoned in on that thing and I just forget everything else around me. Um, you can definitely stay productive, in other words, when you work with your hands. Um, number 11, when it comes to books, do you like ebooks and audiobooks? No. No. <laughs> I'm not a fan of ebooks. Um, you know, all you can fit so much on a library and, and you don't have to have a huge big thing of books and whatever else and, and what. It, yeah, but my books always work. And my books don't make me mess up my head when I'm trying to sleep. I can read a book in bed when I get tired, put it off to the side and go right to sleep. Uh, E-books, it's an electronic screen. It messes up your, you know, melatonin, I think it is, levels and, and whatever else. It's not real good for you. I'm not a fan of ebooks or audiobooks. Number 12, what does it mean to work with your hands? Well, kind of already explained that. Um, trying to see if there's anything around here. Uh, you know, to show you this, here is a, um, these, I got these on eBay from a seller in Russia, and it's goat um, down, and it's a knitted glove made out of, out of a goat, you know, like the, the wool or whatever you would call it. I don't know what kind of goats that they are, but uh, uh, they, they knit these things. And, you know, you put these things on in the wintertime, and, man, there's, there's almost nothing that's warmer than this. I mean, they're just amazing. Um, working with your hands, you see. You can make something like this, learn to make something like that, and it's of great value. Um, here's my knit hat I've worn many times in different videos. This is a, uh, you know, probably knitted with a machine, I would imagine. But um, there's a lot of things that you can do with your hands, okay? Uh, so that's what I'd recommend getting into. Um, number 13, for a woman who struggles with porn, how does she deal with that? Well, I have a whole study on the thing of the pornography epidemic. Um, First and foremost, you need to realize it's sin. If you're born again, you can't continue in sin, that grace may abound. God's not going to keep having grace for you if you mess around with sin. His chastisement gets worse and worse and worse. Speaking from experience, okay? Uh, pornography is a very, very wicked thing, um, just as rock music, video games, uh, drunkenness, smoking cigarettes, uh, things like that. 
the more you do that stuff, the less God, God is going to have grace for you. Because His Holy Spirit, when you're saved, the Holy Spirit will come into your life and say, Stop. Don't do that anymore. You'll start to feel that guilt, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And if you listen and you say, God, I need help, He will eventually give you victory over that. And you'll feel it. And one day it's just like a switch goes and just shuts it right off. Um, but you have to fight it. You have to fight that thing. Uh, if you are having a hard time with, with getting away from internet pornography because it's so readily available, then uh, you might need to get away from the internet for a while. Um, if you're going to a store that sells you know, paper-based pornography, if they still do, I guess they still do, but um, don't go to the store anymore. Avoid that section. You have to fight it. Understand that it's killing your, your relationship with the Lord. The Lord's not happy with that. So you have to fight it hard. Again, you can listen to my study on that. Um, number 14, do you believe the quote, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life? Um, I know where that's going. It's kind of a philosophical thing of, you know, I'm not really working. I'm doing what I love. I, I get it. I understand that. Um, I, I tend to stay away from philosophy uh, just because the Bible says you can be spoiled by it. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm living the life that I've always dreamed of living here off grid, uh, in Northern Maine, uh, beautiful, just breathtaking area, certainly. But to say, I, you know, do what you love and you'll never work. No, I, we work. <laughs> and, and sometimes it's not always fun. Sometimes the work here is just downright backbreaking and you come in and you're sweating and you're just, uh, you know, and you're tired and you think I got to get that stuff done tomorrow and your your back is saying I don't want to work anymore um, so I, I tend to stay away from philosophy like that number 15 what can I keep my lips moist with instead of Vaseline okay there's other types of herbs too that you can add into that by the way this is a good base Coconut oil is a good base, and then you can add in things like comfrey or um, chickweed or there's other herbs that you can add in to coconut oil, blend it together, and it can, again, heal you and, and whatever else. This, again, right here, the yarrow, beeswax, uh, coconut oil, couldn't think for a minute. And I don't know if there's anything else in this, but, you know, uh, this, this you could put on your lips. Wouldn't hurt anything. Uh, number 16, are you a fan of brand name, name brand clothes, shoes, or anything? Um, well, that depends on what you mean by um, name brand clothes. I do, um, I do believe in the thing of buying quality clothing, but it's not because I want to walk around saying, oh, look at this, you know, this is an official whatever. That's, I reject that. Um, and, you know, an Armani suit or something like an Italian Armani suit. <laughs> no time for stuff like that. Um, I am a fan of Filson clothing, Alaskan Outfitter. outfitter. They make really good wool clothing. Um, I don't buy it new. Uh, I buy, you know, I go onto eBay and buy used clothing, but it's because it's really high quality. It's not some kind of made in Chinese junk clothing or whatever else. Um, if it's a high quality article of clothing, um, that's going to last you for a long time, then yeah, I think it's a good, a good idea if it's modest, of course. Um, but to say that you have to have name brand clothing just to kind of look good or whatever or to impress people, eh, that's a problem. Um, that's just being worldly. Uh, the, the, that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So you don't need to do that. Um, and shoes, of course, too, you know. Eh. Or watches, you know, this is a cheap Timex watch. I don't need a, a Rolex or some kind of thing like that. If it keeps time, I don't care. My life I live too, I'm just going to beat up any watch I get. So, uh, verse, or, yeah, verse 17. I knew I was going to say that. I kept thinking, I'm going to say verse any minute now. But number 17, question number 17. What do you think about gospel concerts? Well, they're probably pretty much done now because you can't have a concert and have people all packed in close to each other. Um, but gospel concerts, eh, where's the scripture? Let's have a music ministry, chapter and verse, please. Uh, 
you know, you're kind of using the world system out there. You know, I, I think if some some band got together and wanted to have like a big uh, philharmonic orchestra type of a deal or whatever, and people singing hymns, well, probably not going to be too many saved people in the band there, but um, like a smaller bluegrass band and people sitting around listening to them, but it's not really a concert. I don't know. I, I just, I think that I've been to plenty of concerts over the years and it's always been kind of a fleshly type of a thing. And they have the, the exciting song at the beginning and they, they have the whole course, you know, that they do this whole planned event thing, exciting song, then kind of a slower song and then kind of a, <clears throat> you know, whatever. And then the guy talks and, you know, not really into that. <clears throat> Number 18, in your own words, what is a simple life and how do you live it? Well, um, the simplest way I can simplify what a simple life is, is uh, living debt free. Okay. I was thinking about this the other day and I thought, you know, um, we've been debt free ever since we've been married. My wife and I, we've never been in debt for any reason. And there are times that it's very difficult um, because we don't have the things that we need uh, in terms of we'd really like to have this or we have a vehicle that breaks down and we end up having to walk someplace to repair it or we whatever. Um, we've been through some rough times, but uh, I would rather go through any amount of rough times like that and never have a payment lingering over my head. You see, when you're debt free, you have flexibility that you can say, hey, you know what? We don't have much money right now. Shut the lights off, you know. Let's just use candlelight for a while because of our electricity bill. Let's put on more clothing to lower our heat bill, you know, and whatever else. There's flexibility when you're debt free. Um, you know, we can't afford a real nice vehicle, so let's just drive a piece of junk around. Or let's walk, or let's, you know, ride bicycle or whatever. Um, debt free living is the simplest way to have a simple life. Uh, if I can say it that way. Uh, when you get into debt and payments and things are always there lingering over your head, um, you can't cut back. The bank is not going to say, hey, this month you can't afford it. You want to cut back a little bit? No, no, no. You have the same amount that you have to pay. So uh, number 19, have you ever had to sue someone or had been sued? No, no. Um, I've never had to sue anybody. I could, I'm sure, you know, libel and slander. There's plenty of people out there that I could if I want to take the time to spend, you know, money and whatever else, but it's really not worth it. The criminal system here, the criminal justice system here in America is pretty much a joke at this point in time. Um, I'm not about to waste my time on it. Um, number 20, for someone, and I, I let the Lord take care of my issues with people. I've seen people that wrong this ministry and I just, okay, whatever. I answer them and things and then I just back off and I just watch the Lord just wreck them. I've seen that. Number 20, for someone who wants to eat healthy and possibly lose weight, do you have any books you recommend to study nutrition or healthy foods? Do we have that World's Healthiest Foods book somewhere here? Got to get my wife's help here. Um, one of our most used books for reference. Uh, I'm trying to see here, wasn't the... Um, I got to recommend this one too. Uh, but let me have that one. Thank you to my lovely assistant. That's off camera. Okay. Um, this is a good one here actually on the, the issue of sugar and getting away from your traditional native diet. Um, phys nutrition and physical degeneration by Weston A. Price. You've heard of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Um, really interesting stuff in there showing how that, uh, People in native cultures that don't have the Western diet of all the processed sugar and, and everything else, um, their teeth are actually perfect. They have good dental health, good dental hygiene, and um, many of them weren't even brushing their teeth. And you have, you know, these people when they're, when they're you know, when they're eating their native foods, foods from their area where that God created out there, wild edibles and whatever else, they're in excellent condition. But then when you have um, more people from Africa here, when uh, sugar is introduced to the diet 
and Western food, processed food, you can see what happens to their teeth. And not only their teeth, but other types of degeneration. Um, so it's a just a really fascinating book of all different people. He traveled the world, you know, and, and saw people and whatever else. And it's, it's all about going back to um, traditional foods of, of your culture. It's a fascinating study. Really, really fascinating. But this is kind of our go-to book here for health and nutrition. It's a pocket-sized book, you know, it's just you kind of just stick it in your shirt pocket or a little sarcasm there. It's called The World's Healthiest Foods, okay, by uh, George Matelgen. Matelgen, I guess he's from India. But um, right there it is. Rather large book. Um, but it has... Um, Yeah. Um, how oxidation is very toxic to your body. Yeah. Talking about oxidation and things like that. Like here's a here's this page on carrots. Okay. And it goes through carrots and um, nutrient, vitamin A, and uh, density, 40.7, quality, excellent. And then it goes down, biotin, vitamin K, dietary fiber, moly, molybdenum, Potassium, vitamin B6, vitamin C, manganese, vitamin B3. Um, goes down through the best way to select carrots, the best way to store carrots, the best way to prepare carrots, the best way to cook carrots, all the different stuff there. And, I mean, he's got sections on uh, plums and prunes. You know, there's another one. So you have the green is kind of your vegetables right here. Then you have the orange is fruits. Um, the blue is seafood uh, like fish um, and then you get into the brown I think is grains yeah health promoting benefits of flax seeds then you get into um, meat there's a thing on chicken um, lamb um, beans and legumes you know I mean just so many different things and uh, different spices and herbs in the back. I mean, this, this book is incredible. And um, we bought this thing a number of years ago. And and um, uh, you can see all my wife's little tabs there on the edges, you know, quick little reference type of things and whatever that you can just turn there and say, oh, yeah, hey, we got to, you know, we got to get some of this or whatever. Again, you get sick. Okay. Oh, man, I'm, I just feel a lot of pain in my stomach and, oh, you know, What's going on here? I don't know what, what's happening or whatever. Well, what foods will cure me? Okay. Um, uh, I'm, I got kind of a fever, kind of a, oh man, a kind of dizziness. Food. Um, you know, uh, herbal cures are okay, but it's mostly nutrition. God designed it so that you can just go out into nature and, and just food in general and eat the right foods and you'll get better. Um, people want to make, you know, medicine, this thing of eat whatever you feel like eating. You can eat a bunch of junk food and, and just, oh, I'm feeling sick, so just pop a few pills in my mouth and it'll take away my sickness. No, it just covers up your sickness. Okay, uh, Excedrin, aspirin, Tylenol, whatever, those things don't take away your headache. They cover it up. Okay, your headache is a is a nutritional deficiency. It's it's also toxicity in your body. Again, migraine headache sufferer here in the past. I used to be an Excedrin junkie. It was pretty much a daily thing a lot of times with me in the past. Why? Because I was eating sugar all the time, drinking poison pop. We could like to call it not soda pop, but poison pop. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's not some kind of a thing that I can just say, here, receive the information on. Uh, how to be healthy, you know, there you go. Um, it works for everybody, you know, then the nurse cure all, you know, there you go. No, no, it's research. It's reading. It's studying. Um, what are the foods for my people? Okay. Um, I'm not going to eat a lot of rice. Why? Well, my ancestry is German. Uh, we're more of a pork eating, animal fat eating, northern diet type of a thing. Um, I'm not going to eat a lot of uh, African foods. Um, 
doesn't make me racist. It just makes me understanding what God made me, who God made me to be. And, uh, you know, wherever you live, the environment that you live in, if you're comfortable living there and it's similar to your ancestral lands, um, learn what things grow natively in your area and eat those things. Support local farmers. Whatever. So uh, that is it for the questions there from that one. Um, and so we will get back to answering some more letters here. I'm going to have to take a break. But uh, very good uh, questions there. Hopefully I answered them in a way that it was understandable. And so that is going to be it. See you in the next video.